Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Worksheet Cloud and to your English lesson and to our novel wonder. I do hope you've been enjoying it. I'm going to be reading from the first day jitters, which is page 35, and there'll be some pictures along the way and we'll be, we'll be chatting a little bit. So I do hope you enjoy it. So that's just the cover. Mine looks like the first one. And um, let's go. Okay. So I admit that the first day of school I was so nervous that the butterflies in my stomach were more like pigeons flying around the, my insides. Have you seen pigeons when there's a whole lot? It's quite chaotic, so you must have been feeling quite sick. Mom and Dad were probably a little nervous too, but they acted all excited for me, taking pictures of me and Via before we left the house, since it was Via's first day of school too. Up until a few days ago, we were still not sure whether I was going to school at all. After my tour of the school, Mom and Dad had reversed sides on whether I should go or not. Mom was now the one saying I shouldn't go, and Dad was saying I should. Dad had told me he was really proud of how I handled myself with Julian, and that I was turning into quite a strong man. And I heard him tell Mom that he now thought she had been right all along. Um, but mom, I could tell, wasn't so sure anymore. When dad told her that he and Via wanted to walk me to school today, too, since it was on the way to the subway station, mom seemed relieved that we'd all be going together. Now, I'm not sure if some of you have seen a subway. They're normally overseas in London um, and normally underground. Mom seemed relieved that we'd be going together, and I guess I was too. Even though Beecher Prep is just a few blocks from our house, I've only been on that block a couple of times before, in general, I try to avoid blocks where there are lots of kids roaming around. And I can assume you know why, because of his face. On our block, everyone knows me and I know everybody. I know every brick and every tree trunk and every crack in the sidewalk. I know Mrs. Grimaldi, the lady who's always sitting by her window and the old guy who walks up and down the street whistling like a bird. I know the deli on the corner where mom gets our bagels and the waitresses at the coffee shop who all call me honey and give me lollipops whenever they see me. The deli is like one of those shops where you can go get your fresh meat and bread and things like that. I love my neighborhood of North River Heights which is why it was so strange to be walking down these blocks feeling like it was all new to me suddenly. I just want to get a bigger screen. We'll come back to some pictures now. Ames Fort Avenue, a street I'd been down a million times, looked totally different for some reason. Full of people I'd never saw before, waiting for buses, pushing strollers. We crossed Ames Fort and turned up Heights Place. Via walked next to me like she usually does, and Mom and Dad were behind us. As soon as we turned the corner, we saw all the kids in front of the school, hundreds of them, talking to each other in little groups, laughing or standing with their parents who were talking with other parents. I kept my head way down. Everyone's just as nervous as you are, said Via in my ear. Just remember that this is everyone's first day of school, okay? Mr. Tushman was greeting students and parents in front of the school entrance. I have to admit, so far, nothing bad had happened. I didn't catch anyone staring or even noticing me. Only once did I look up to see some girls looking my way and whispering with their hands cupped over their mouths, but they looked away when they saw me notice them. We reached the front entrance. Okay, so this is it, big boy, said Dad, putting his hands on top of my shoulders. Have a great first day. I love you, said Via, giving me a big hug and a kiss. You too, I said. I love you, Augie, said Dad, hugging me. Bye. Then mom hugged me, but I could tell she was about to cry, which would have totally embarrassed me. So I just gave her a fast hard hug, turned and disappeared into the school. I know moms tend to embarrass us, don't they? I'm a mom, I do that too. Locks. I went straight to room 301 on the third floor. Now I was glad I'd gone on that little tour because I knew exactly where to go and didn't have to look up once. I noticed that some kids were definitely staring at me now. I did my thing of pretending not to notice. I went inside the classroom and the teacher was writing on the chalkboard while all the kids started sitting at different desks. 
The desks were in a half circle facing the chalkboard, so I chose the desk in the middle towards the back, which I thought would make it harder for anyone to stare at me. I still kept my head way down, just looking up enough from under my bangs to see everyone's feet. I want to show you, I've got a little picture here. I just need to find my, my screen. Um, let me just see. I want to show you what it looks like here. This is the one I wanted to show you. So, as you can see, that's what he's talking about. The bangs are, um, is another word for fringe. As the desk started to fill up, I did notice that no one sat down next to me. A couple of times someone was about to sit next to me, then changed his or her mind at the last minute and sat somewhere else. Oh, so hard. Hey, August, it was Charlotte giving me her little wave as she sat down at a desk in, in the front of the class. Why would anyone choose to sit up way in front of the class? I don't know. Hey, I said, nodding hello. Then I noticed, noticed Julian was sitting a few seats away from her, talking to some other kids. I know he saw me, but he didn't say hello. Suddenly, someone was sitting down next to me. It was Jack Will. Jack, what's up? He said, nodding at me. Hey, Jack, I answered, waving my hand, which I immediately wished I hadn't done because it felt so uncool. I wonder if any of you have been um, to a new school. Uh, maybe you've been at the same school forever, which is wonderful. But just think about the new children who are joining perhaps this term or have only joined this year. Okay, kids, okay, everybody settle down, said the teacher now facing us. She had written her name, Miss Potosa, on the chalkboard. Everybody find a seat, please. Come in, she said to a couple of kids who had just walked into the room. There's a seat there and right there. She hadn't noticed me yet. Now, the first thing I want everyone to do is stop talking and... She noticed me. Put your backpacks down and quieten down. She had only hesitated for a millionth of a second, but I could tell the moment she saw me. Like I said, I'm used to it by now. I'm going to take attendance and do the seating chart, she continued, sitting on the edge of her desk. Next to her were three neat rows of accordion folders. Accordion, um, it's one of those musical instruments that you sort of move like this and it opens and closes. Um, I should have put a picture up for you, but Google it and you'll see what I mean. When I call your name, come up and I'll hand you a folder with your name on it. It contains your class schedule and your combination lock. That's what a combination lock looks like, which you should not try to open until I tell you to. Your lock, locker number is written on the class schedule. Be forewarned that some lockers are not right outside this class, but down the hall. And before anyone even thinks of asking, no, you cannot switch lockers and you can't switch locks. Then, if it's time at the end of this period, we're all going to get to know each other a little better, okay? Okay. She picked up the clipboard on her desk and started reading the names out loud. Okay, so, Julian Albans, she said, looking up. Julian raised his hand and said, yeah, at the same time. Hi, Julian, she said, making a note on her seating chart. She picked up the very first folder and held it, held it out forward. Sorry, held it out towards him. Come pick it up she said, kind of no nonsense. He got up and took it from her. Zamama Chin. She handed a folder to each child as she read off the names. As she went down the list, I noticed that the seat next to me was the only one still empty, even though there were two kids sitting at one desk just a few seats away. When she called the name of one of them, a big kid named Henry Joplin, who already looked like a teenager, she said, Henry, there's an empty desk right over there. Why don't you take that seat, okay? She handed him his folder and pointed to the desk next to mine. Although I didn't look at him directly, I could tell Henry did not want to move next to me. Just by the way, he dragged his bag, backpack on the floor as he came over, like he was moving in slow motion. Then he plopped his backpack up really high on the right side of the desk so it was kind of like a wall between his desk and mine. Plopped. Do you remember what figure of speech that is? Good, on a matter here. It's a sound. Maya Markovitz, Miss Potosa was saying. Yeah, said a girl about four desks down from me. Miles Nuri. Yeah, said the kid that had been sitting with Henry Joplin. As he walked past to his desk, I saw him shoot Henry a 
way you look. August Pullman, said Miss Petosa. Yeah, I said quietly, raising my hand a bit. Hi, August, she said, smiling at me very nicely when I went up to get my folder. I kind of felt everyone's eyes burning into my back for the few seconds I stood in front of the class and everybody looked down when I walked back to my desk. Um, everybody's eyes burning into my back. Um, they're not really burning um, or on fire, but obviously it's just an exaggeration of how he felt they were looking at him. I resisted spinning the combination when I sat down, even though everyone else was doing it, because she had specifically told us not to. I was already pretty good at opening locks anyway, because I used them on my bike. Henry kept trying to open his lock, <clears throat> but couldn't do it. He was getting frustrated and kind of cursing under his breath. Miss Petosa called out the next few names. The last name was Jack Will. After she handed Jack his folder, she said, Okay. So everybody write your combinations down somewhere safe that you won't forget, okay? But if you do forget, which happens at least 3.2 times per semester or per term, Mrs. Garcia has a list of all the combination numbers. Now go ahead, take your locks out of your folders and spend a couple of minutes practicing how to open them. Though I know some of you went ahead and did that anyway. She was looking at Henry when she said that. And in the meantime, I'll tell you guys a little something about myself. And then you guys can tell me a little about yourselves and we'll um, get to know each other. Sounds good? Good. She smiled at everyone, though I felt like she was smiling at me the most. It wasn't a shiny smile like Mrs. Garcia's smile, but a normal smile like she meant it. She looked very different from what I thought teachers were going to look like. I guess I thought she'd look like Miss Fell from Jimmy Neutron. So I've got a picture of Jimmy Neutron, so you can go Google and see what um, the old lady looks like. Miss Fell, an old lady with a big bun on top of her head. Star, sorry, and then it says, it, but in fact, she looked exactly like Mom Mothma from Star Wars Episode um, 4. Haircut, kind, sorry, haircut, kind of like a boy's, and a big white shirt, kind of like a tunic. So this one over here. She turned around and started writing on the chalkboard. Henry still couldn't get his lock to open, and he was getting more and more frustrated every time someone else popped one open. He got really annoyed when I was able to open mine on the first try. The funny thing is, if he hadn't put the backpack between us, I most definitely would have offered to help him. The next chapter around the room. Miss Petosa told us a little bit about who she was. It was boring stuff about where she originally came from and how she always wanted to teach and then she left her job on Wall Street about six years ago to pursue her dream and teach kids. She ended by asking if anyone had any questions and Julian raised his hand. Yes, she had to look at the list to remember his name. Julian? That's cool about how you're pursuing your dream, he said. Thank you. You're welcome, he smiled proudly. Okay, so why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, Julian? Actually, here's what I want everyone to do. Think of two things you want other people to know about you. Actually, wait a minute. How many of you came from the Beecher Lower School? About half the kids raised their hands. Okay, so a few of you already know each other, but the rest of you, I guess, are new to the school, right? Okay, so everyone think of two things you want other people to know about you. And if you know some of the other kids, try to think of things they don't already know about you. Okay? Okay. So let's start with Julian and we'll go around the room. Julian scrunched up his face and started tapping his forehead like he was thinking really hard. Okay, whenever you're ready, Miss Petosa said. Okay, so number one is that do me a favor and start with your names. Okay, Miss Petosa interrupted. It'll help me remember everyone. Oh, okay. So my name is Julian, and the number one thing I'd like to tell everyone about myself is that I got Battleground Mystic for my Wii, and it's totally awesome. I don't know what the game is like, um, but that's what he's talking about. And the number two thing is that we got a ping pong table this summer. Very nice. I love ping pong, said Miss Petosa. Does anyone have any questions for Julian? Is Battleground Mystic multiplayer or one player, said the kid named Miles. 
not those kind of questions, Guy, said Miss Potosa. Um, okay, so how about you? She pointed to Charlotte, probably because her desk was closest to the front. Oh, sure. Charlotte didn't hesitate for even a second, like she knew exactly what she wanted to say. My name is Charlotte, I have two sisters, and we just got a new puppy named Suki in July. We got her from an animal shelter, and she's so, so cute. That's great, Charlotte, thank you, said Miss Potosa. Okay, then, who's next? Like a lamb to the slaughter. Something that you say about someone who goes somewhere calmly, not knowing that something unpleasant is going to happen to him. I googled it last night. That's what I was thinking when Miss Potosa called my name. So, like a lamb to the slaughter, um, he doesn't think he doesn't know anything's going to happen. But he's gone to school quite calmly, but something unpleasant is about is about to happen. My name is August, I said, and yeah, I kind of mumbled it. What? said someone. Can you speak up, honey? said Miss Potosa. My name is August, I said louder, forcing myself to look up. I um, have a sister named Via and a dog named Daisy, and um, that's it. Wonderful, said Miss Potosa. Anyone have questions for August? No one said anything. Okay, you're next, you're next said Miss Potosa to Jack. Wait, I have a question for August, said Julian, raising his hand. Why do you have that tiny braid in the back of your hair? So it looks like that. Is that like a Padawan thing? Now, for those who don't know, we're going to get to that with Star Wars. Yeah, I shrugged. What's a Padawan thing? said Miss Potosa, smiling at me. It's from Star Wars, answered Julian. A Padawan is a Jedi apprentice. So somebody who's learning to be um, um, a Jedi and has got this long braid. Oh, interesting, asked Miss, answered Miss Potosa, looking at me. So are you into Star Wars, August? I guess, I, I nodded, not looking up because I was really wanting just to slide under the desk. Who's your favourite character, Julian asked. I started thinking maybe that he wasn't so bad. Django Fett? What about Darth Sidious, he said. Do you like him? Okay, guys, you can talk about st Star Wars stuff at recess or at break said Miss Potosa carefully. But let's keep going. We haven't heard from you yet, she said to Jack. Now it was Jack's turn to talk, but I admit I didn't hear a word he said. Maybe no one got the Darth Sidious thing, and maybe Julian didn't mean anything at all. But in Star Wars, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Darth Sidious's face gets burned by Sith lightning and becomes totally deformed. So there it is. I see I need to move out the way. So I apologize for this graphic picture, but in Star Wars, his face gets burnt. His skin gets all shriveled up and his whole face just kind of melts. I picked at Julian and he was looking at me. Yeah, he knew what he was saying. Choose kind. There was a lot of shuffling around when the bell rang and everyone got up to leave. I checked my schedule and it said my next class was English, room 321. I didn't stop to see if anyone else from my home was going my way. I just zoomed out of the class and down the hall and sat down as far from the front as possible. The teacher, a really tall man with a yellow beard, was writing on the chalkboard. Kids came in laughing and talking in little, little groups, but I didn't look up. Basically, the same thing that happened in homeroom happened again. No one sat next to me except for Jack, who was joking around with some kids who weren't in our homeroom. I could tell Jack was the kind of kid other kids liked. He had, he had lots of friends. He made people laugh. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger for you because we'll come back to our pictures just now. When the second bell rang, everyone got quieter and the teacher turned around and faced us. He said his name was Mr. Brown. And then he started talking about what we would be doing this semester, this term. At a certain point, somewhere between a wrinkle in time and Shen of the sea, he noticed me but kept right on talking. I was mostly doodling in my notebook while he talked, but every once in a while I would sneak a look at the other students. Charlotte was in this class. So were Julian and Henry. Miles wasn't. Mr. Brown had written on the chalkboard in big block letters, PRECEPT. Okay, everyone, write this down at the very top of the first page in your English notebook. 
as we did what he told us to do, he said, okay, so who can tell me what a precept is? Does anyone know? No one raised their hands. Mr. Brown smiled again, nodded, and turned around to write on the chalkboard again. Precepts. Rules about really important things. Like a motto, someone called out. Like a motto, said Mr. Brown, nodding as he continued writing on the board. Like a famous quote, like a line from a fortune cookie. Anything, any saying or ground rule that can motivate you. Basically, a precept is anything that helps guide us when making decisions about really important things. He wrote all that on the chalkboard and then turned around and faced us. So, what are some really important things, he asked us. A few kids raised their hands and as he pointed at them, they gave their answers, which he wrote on the chalkboard in really, really sloppy writing. Rules, schoolwork, homework. What else? He said as he wrote, not even turning around. Just call things out. He wrote everything everyone called out. Family, pets, parents. One girl called out the environment. He wrote on the chalkboard and added our world. Sharks, because they eat dead things in the ocean said one of the boys, a kid named Reed, and Mr. Brown wrote, Mr. Brown wrote down sharks. Bees, seat belts, recycling, friends. Okay, said Mr. Brown, writing all those things down. He turned around when he finished writing to face us again, but no one's um, named the most important thing of all. We all looked at him out of ideas. God, said one kid. And I could tell that even though Mr. Brown wrote God down, that wasn't the answer he was looking for. Without anything, without saying anything else, he wrote down who we are. Who we are, he said, underlining each word as he said it. Who we are. Us. Right? What kind of people are we? What kind of person are you? Isn't that the most important thing of all? Isn't that the kind of question we should be asking ourselves all the time? What kind of person person am I? Did anyone happen to notice the, the plaque next to the door of the school? Anyone read what it says? Anyone? He looked around, but no one knew the answer. It says, know thyself, he said, smiling and nodding. And learning who you are is what you're here to do. I thought we were here to learn English, Jack cracked, which made everyone laugh. Oh, yeah. That too, Mr. Brown answered, which I thought was very cool of him. He turned around and wrote in big, huge block letters that spread all the way across the chalkboard, Mr. Brown's September precept. When given the choice between being right or being kind, choose kind. Okay, everybody, he said, facing us again, I want you to start a brand new se section, sorry, section in your notebooks and call it Mr. Brown's precept. He kept talking as we did what he was telling us to do. Put today's date at the top of the first page. And from now on, at the beginning of every month, I'm going to write a new Mr. Brown precept on the chalkboard. And you're going to write it down in your notebooks. Then we're going to discuss that precept and what it means. At the end of the month, you're going to write an essay about it, about what it means to you. So by the end of the year, you'll all have your own list of precepts to take away with you. Over the summer, I ask all my students to come up with their very own personal precept, write it on a postcard and mail it to me from wherever you go on your summer vacation. People really do that? Said one girl whose name I didn't know. Oh yeah, he answered. People really do that. I've had students send me precepts years after they've graduated from the school, actually. It's pretty amazing. He paused and stroked his beard. But anyway, next summer seems like a long way off, I know, he joked which made us laugh. So everyone relax a bit while I take attendance, and then when we've finished with that, I'll start telling you about all the fun stuff we're going to be doing this year in English. He pointed to Jack when he said this, which was also funny, so we all laughed at that. As I wrote down Mr. Brown's September precept, I suddenly realized that I was going to like school, no matter what. Right, we move on to the next um, chapter, which is lunch, and I just want to make the um, picture smaller, so that you can see the next thing that I'm going to talk about. So let's just play from there. Great. Via had warned me about lunch in middle school, so I guess I should have known it would be hard. I just didn't expect it could be this hard. Basically, 
All the kids from all the fifth grade classes poured into the cafeteria. Uh, sorry, we're on the wrong screen. That's okay. I'll just go ahead. There we go. So lots of schools have cafeterias or places where you can sit and you can order food from the tuck shop or they've got a proper um, selection of food. I know there's a school in Joburg that has um, their own cafeteria for lunch for the children. Um, most of the kids were talking loudly and bumping into one another while they ran to different tables. One of the lunchroom teachers said something about no seat saving allowed, but I didn't know what she meant, and maybe no one else did, either because just about everyone was saving seats for their friends. I tried to sit down at one table, but the kid in the next chair said, oh sorry, but someone else is sitting here. So I moved to an empty table and just waited for everyone to finish stampeding and the lunchroom teacher to tell us what to do next. As she started telling us the cafeteria rules, I looked around to see where Jack Will was sitting, but I didn't see him on my side of the room. Kids were still coming in as the teachers started calling the first few tables to get their tray and stand on line at the counter. Julian, Henry and Miles were sitting at a table towards the back of the room. Mom had packed me a cheese sandwich, graham crackers and a juice box, so I didn't need to stand on line when my table was called. Instead, I just concentrated on opening my backpack, pulling out my lunch bag and slowly opening the aluminium foil wrapping of my sandwich. I could tell I was being stared at without even looking up. I knew that people were nudging each other, watching me out of the corner of their eyes. I thought I was used to those kind of stares by now, but I guess I wasn't. There was one table of girls that I knew were whispering about me because they were talking behind their hands. Their eyes and whispers kept bouncing over to me. So again, what do we call that um, part of speech? Um, uh, their eyes and whispers kept bouncing over to me. So giving um, human qualities. Like a whisper can't bounce. So that is personification. I hate the way I eat. I know how weird it looks. I had surgery to fix my cleft palate when I was a baby. And then a second cleft surgery when I was four. But I still have a hole in the roof of my mouth. And even though I had jaw alignment surgery a few years ago, I have to chew food in the front of my mouth. I didn't even realize how this looked until I was at a birthday party once. And one of the kids told the mom of the birthday boy he didn't want to sit next to me because I was too messy with all the food crumbs shooting out of my mouth. I know the kid wasn't trying to be mean, but he got into trouble later and his mom called my mom that night to apologize. When I got home from the party, I went to the bathroom mirror and started eating a cracker to see what I looked like when I was chewing. The kid was right. I eat like a tortoise. If you've ever seen a tortoise eating, like some prehistoric swamp thing. Shame, so we're going to stop there today. Our next chapter is the summer table. But yeah, lots, lots in there. This new boy, August, going to school. Um, he doesn't look like everybody else. And I really, as we're reading this, I want to encourage you to look at yourself and think about how blessed you are. Maybe you've got pimples or a scar or something, but think of um, poor August looking um, or, or being compared to Darth Sidious with that sort of melted face. Um, so quite hard, guys, to um, have to cope with that. You know, it's hard enough going to school and being new. Never mind going to school, being new and having some kind of dis disability. Um, so whether it's and being in a walk, uh, wheelchair or and blind or face deformity. Um, those things are quite hard. So today, just go ahead and count your blessings. And then we do we have come to the end of our lesson. So remember to go and look at the worksheet, which will help you um, answer questions. I will also put some figurative language in there to see if you can identify them from the book. And then if you've got any questions about today's lesson, please email me at grade six at worksheetcloud.com. Let me know if you're enjoying these lessons. Um, what I can do, perhaps I must um, do more acting. I'm not sure. You let me know by sending me an email. And so we've come to the end of our lesson. Thanks for watching grade sixes and I'll see you in our next lesson. Remember, same time, I might be in a different place. Bye everybody.